everyone, Cleo here and today I'm going to be talking about the Booktube Prize Finals. So by the time this video goes up we will know who the winner is of the Booktube Prize 2020. I will leave that information in a sort of like pinned comments down below and in the description as well. As well as any information about the Booktube Prize in general and all of these books that are on the final selection. Uh, so Booktube Prize has been quite a long journey. Uh, it started like I don't even know how when it started, maybe it was December even, in which we were given a long list from which to kind of vote on books that we thought deserved to be on the like long list for this um, prize. And then we went through a couple of rounds of having people read six of these books at the time and then having like the three best of these books continue on into the next round. And so we are now in the final round. There are six fiction novels left for the fiction section of the Booktube Prize. So as the prize implies, there's all people part of the book bookish community that are taking part in the judging for this one. And so uh, I have just finished the last one of these six books. I only have five of them with me physically. But so the uh, finalists for this year's Booktube Prize are Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, Lanny by Max Porter, Ten Minutes 38 Seconds in the Strange World by Edith Shafak, The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri, A Single Threat by Tracy Chevalier, and Women Talking by Miriam Tapes. So I've just finished all of these, so I wanted to go through my thoughts for all of these and which books that I feel should win and which books that I would kind of be disappointed if they won. So The Beekeeper of Aleppo is a book about a um, family that is living in Aleppo at the time of the Syrian uh, war breaks out and while initially they are kind of hesitant to leave their country at a certain point they really have to uh, in order for them to be able to survive and in order for them to be able to leave a, to live a safe life and so they become refugees and try to make their way to the UK and so it's all about that whole journey and the sort of situations of refugees everywhere so it's very much a uh, timely novel because yeah, the refugee crisis definitely is a very important topic of our times. Uh, and so I like this book, but it's also nothing that really blew me away. I like the way in which uh, this story is structured. So we're always getting a chapter that is going to take place from their uh, sort of like temporary place of residence in the UK at the end of this book where they've made their way to and like it, halfway through the chapter it will then shift back to their journey trying to make it into the UK. Uh, I very much liked its portrayal of that whole journey that they underwent and the consequences it had for them because they are very much both struggling with the uh, events that have taken place which the losses that they have suffered and they're very much both suffering for so, from sort of like PTSD and uh, it becomes clearer and clearer throughout this novel that our protagonist is actually not the most reliant narrator and I always like an unreliable narrator and we're starting to question more and more about what is taking place and some of the things that we've like some of the early facts that have been established in this novel suddenly become unclear. So that I very much liked. What I was kind of missing was bees, you know. At the very beginning we are introduced to our protagonist who is a beekeeper in Aleppo. And we very much feel his love for beekeeping, his love for his bees and for making sure that they are thriving, being very much in the zone with his bees. He very much is able to pick up all minute differences in their behaviors to understand their needs. Uh, and I very much love that one. And then in his like UK time frame, we also see that there's a sort of bee whose wings have been clipped off that he's kind of taken under his care and I just wanted there to be so much more bee stuff in there. I know that obviously when he was a refugee and when he was on the on the move uh, he could, there wasn't that much potential for it to be about bees but you know I think the title implied that we were gonna get some bee stuff and I just loved all the times that we were talking about bees, I just felt a passion for beekeeping through it and that just made me want more of that content which I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get enough of. So all in all, I liked this read, but it just wasn't extremely impactful. Um, so I think I landed on a sort of like 3.5 star rating for this one. Um, so yeah, happy I read it, but like 
If I wouldn't have read it, it would have also not made a huge difference on my reading life. Next up, let me go for Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. So this is a book that I read for the Men Booker Prize in 2019, where it won. It was a co-winner with The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. And let me tell you, this is the only winner. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I hated that book. Um, so yeah. Girl, Woman, Other is a story in which we are following, I think, 12 perspectives. Uh, mainly black females living in London. Uh, and all of these, like, within these 12 perspectives, we're getting, like, clusters of people who know each other. So usually we, we were getting, like, three perspectives that are linked to each other somehow and then another group of three and another group of three and another group of three but in between these different groups there are also interconnections and we also have a lead up to a sort of event at the end of the book where some of these characters will come together and that i think is my main criticism actually is that i was expecting a whole lot of these perspectives to get together at the end of this book. I was expecting for like it all to come together at the end and I didn't end up feeling that way. I ended up feeling a little bit underwhelmed with the ending because there was just too much of a setup towards that ending uh, and then that ending for me just didn't satisfy what I was anticipating. But throughout the book I'd really been enjoying it. So I really loved all of these different perspectives, these clusters and the way in which we're looking at these interconnectedness. But also just on a individual base, I loved all of these individual stories in and of themselves. I think it was a very interesting way to tell the story. There was a very interesting voice to the narration. And uh, there were like yeah, all of these perspectives just felt so real, felt so well fleshed out that I definitely did enjoy it a whole lot. But so as I said, that ending to me was a little bit anticlimactic, but all in all, I definitely did enjoy this very much. And uh, I definitely think it deserved to win it. I, I, I chose a different winner, but that doesn't mean that I didn't think that this one deserved a win as well. Next up, let's talk about A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. So this is a book set in the interbellum, so the, t par the time period between World War I and World War II. We are looking at a woman living in the UK. She is moving out from her mother's place and she is moving on her own to live in Winchester. Now she is part of what is considered the surplus woman. Uh, because of all of the losses that have taken place during World War I, there's this whole generation of young men that has gone lost, that has been lost to the war. And so there's a whole lot of women who uh, are looking for a man, but there's just not enough men available to them. So it's very much looking at how this is a young woman who is living in a society that is very much still governed by the idea that women need to find a man, a man to support them. And then the clash with the reality of there not being enough men for all of these women to get somebody. And so, um, yeah, very much the clash between this reality and a society that isn't ready for these different types of female roles yet. Um, our protagonist in this one, she joins up with this band of like embroiderers and it's very much going to go deep into embroidery which is one of my main criticisms of this book is that there's a whole lot of research that went into this one and like you can tell that there's a lot of research that went into it which isn't necessarily a bad thing but i feel like the author put everything she researched into this one which makes it very heavy on detail heavy have very heavy on like um the theory of embroidery and also of clock uh, like bell tolling which is also part of this book and so it just went too heavy into all of those subjects i know too much about bell tolling now never thought i would know that much about it or want to know that much about it um and so that definitely clocked out like i was fine with it at the beginning but we really kept on going deeper and deeper into the subject matter of embroidery and bell tolling so that definitely clocked down the story then there's this sort of mystery element that doesn't come together in a satisfying way at all in my opinion and i feel like as a whole my expectation for this one was to kind of to kind of see how she is paving a path for her own and how um, she is stepping into this new role that society is not prepared for. Um, and it does do that, but the choice that it makes at the very ending of this book, I could not get down with. I definitely was super disappointed with the way that it went because I still feel like we, from a modern day perspective, 
that is not a very um, like from a modern day perspective that for me still feels like a traditional role that she's taking in there so yeah I ended up giving this one a two star rating I think um, it was struggle to get through at times it was very easy to get through at other times but overall the way that that storyline developed and the way that that character arc developed to me was like what was the point if that is going to be your ending because I really dislike this ending so yeah I would say there are people who definitely like this one so definitely do check out some more reviews uh, and maybe if you're okay with going into spoilers check out why uh, some people might have difficulties with that ending um, but yeah for me this totally wasn't worth it Moving on to the first book of these that I read, which I actually read a year ago, I think, and that is Lanny by Max Porter. This is my favorite book of 2019, and it is one of the hardest books to sell on people. So I would just say, go on a limb, read this book. It's not big. Uh, I think the audiobook for this is like five hours, and I would heavily recommend the audiobook. I still haven't read it physically. I was actually hoping to have some time for this um, book two price to maybe reread it but I didn't end up uh, making it but so um, it is told in a different format from time to time you know it has an interesting voice to it because from time to time we will get a perspective of the town through the sort of fictional character of Death Papa Tutwig who is this sort of essence of the town or of nature surrounding the town and he is in tune with the entire town and so he can listen in on conversations happening within the town so from time to time we will get this sort of cacophony of the thoughts of the town people so while events are taking place you will also get like the sort of summary of what of all the people in the town are thinking about this thing taking place but in general it's mostly about this sort of like it's mostly going to look at this sort of uh, the economy between like um, town people and city folk and it's very much going to look at the way that we all like that we tend to think in like an us versus them type of ways in this sort of like clippings in which we get the entire town's perspective we'll definitely have them talk down a little bit on the f uh, um, talk a little bit about the fact that these people are city folk and so they uh, don't really fully belong here so premise wise there's really not much that I can say so we're looking at a family that is uh, recently moved from the city to the country and the mother in this family for example she writes this like I think it's it's either heavily erotic uh, literature or like horror literature but at this point I don't rule really anymore but definitely literature that she doesn't want people to really know about or her son to know about and um, her husband he is very much a city worker he still goes to the city every single day does his commute there so he's hardly at home but they together have a son called Lanny and Lanny is very much this sort of young innocent boy that's still very much in tune with nature a child that's still very much innocent to the realities and the cruelties of the world uh, and then Lanny is taken under the wing of uh, one of his neighbors who's this sort of grumpy old man who teaches art there's something dark that happened in his past that we getting are getting hints of but that we don't know what it actually is and that's really all that I can say without going into spoilers as I said it's a very short read it is only five hours I really cannot go into more of this premise without spoiling things for you but it is beautiful it's got magical realism to it of course so if you don't like magical realism this might not be for you but I absolutely adored it like I cannot like I listened to this on audio uh, while I was cooking I believe like a big part of it was while I was cooking and I can still visualize that moment because I would, it's just such an immersive experience and that's why I would heavily recommend the audiobook because the audiobook does it has a full cast to start with but it also has like nature sounds so whenever we get the perspective of that Papa Tutwig for example there will be these nature sounds in the background to kind of elevate the sort of mysterious element of uh, this perspective um, and yeah I just I, it's just it's uh, it's gorgeous it's got this beautiful lyrical style to it as well because Max Porter is actually originally a poet this is like his first fiction work but it also has a lot of his lyrical style in the way in which this is told so it very much feels a little bit like a book told in verse it's not really told in verse 
but um, there's definitely a lot of that uh, language quality to the story as well. So I would say uh, try it out, please, please try it. <laughs> Moving on to Women Talking by Miriam Tate. This is the final book that I finished. I finished it earlier today. So this is a book about a um, about the Mennonite society, which is a sort of like cult, I would say, uh, in Latin America. And it's based off of true events because for years the women in the society would uh, wake up and f say that they were attacked and the men in the society were saying that they were being attacked by the devil, by Satan, that they were being punished for having bad thoughts um, but at some point one of uh, like the devil is caught red-handed and it turns out that they were actually being assaulted by the men of their society so by people that they've known all of their lives, by friends, by family members um, and so uh, it's going to look into these women talking about their next step. What are they going to do? These women have lived a very secluded life. They don't know anything about the outside world. They don't know the language of the outside world because they speak this sort of ancient German dialect that nobody else has used except for Mennonites. And they cannot even read or write in that language, let alone in any other language. So. Um, leaving the society would also be a big step but not just for those practical reasons that we would think of throughout the book it will be very clear that we're talking very much about like existential questions about fundamental questions about religion and about um the goals that they have in life so and about like they're not just going to be looking at out for their own interests they also need to, of course, take into account the um, future of their children, the future of the young boys in their society, who is going to teach them uh, what's right, what's wrong, if they leave them behind, um, but also the men in their society, if they just leave, who is going to make them see how they should be behaving. And so there are a lot of questions that go into this book, a lot of deep thought that goes into questions about religion and about the way in which they've been taught religion. Uh, and the way about the, the the lessons they've learned about right and wrong and I thought it was an interesting read and I definitely think there are some interesting questions brought up and some very interesting answers and counter arguments that are coming up but it wasn't it wasn't a compelling read neither I mean it's very short it's like 216 pages so I did fly through it because there's just not a whole lot of pages there but Still, there wasn't anything really compelling me through this story. Um, I never really cared all that much about what they were going to decide in the end. Uh, and while it did, uh, it did have some nice philosophical debates going on about to, to it, I, I just don't think that I'm the audience for this book. And then the final book that I'm going to be talking about is 10 Minutes and 38 Seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak. So this is a book set in Istanbul and so we are following a uh, protagonist. Our protagonist is called Leila or Laila? Leila? Her protagonist is called Leila and she is a prostitute working in Istanbul and at the very beginning of this novel she's killed. So uh, throughout this book is actually set in different parts. Uh, it's mainly set in two parts. I think there are three parts but it's mainly divided in two halves. And so in the first part we're looking at Leila who has just been killed but there's this theory that for the first 10 minutes and 30 that for up to 10 minutes and 38 seconds after you've passed away, your subconscious is actually still alive. Your body has passed away, but your subconscious is still alive. Your soul, your essence is still there. And so Leila's soul is looking down upon her body, is seeing um, what has happened to her, and she is thinking back on the events that have taken place throughout her life. I liked, that is the concept that drew me into this story, but I actually liked the second part of this novel more because the second part of this novel dives into her friends and her friends trying to reclaim Layla's body. Layla, as a prostitute, has been buried in some sort of like mass burial ground in Istanbul uh, in an unmarked grave and so her friends very much want to reclaim her body and give her the proper burial that they think that she deserves. And so it's very much looking into found families, which in this book is called water families. And so I very much love that, that whole discussion about um, why, like about how friendship can be stronger than blood bonds and about why um, we restrict certain rights to only uh, have family bonds or blood bonds be included. Uh, think for example of the way in which only 
blood relatives or like your husband or something like that can uh, like can know your medical uh, information when you are in hospital or uh, in this case then how only her family could claim her body uh, and as Layla has become a prostitute she has become estranged from her family and so yeah her family is not going to claim her so why can't we in those situations then allow friends to claim her but so I very much loved that second part of this novel the first part I didn't dislike it but I just uh, didn't like it as much as the second part and as a whole I just felt like this book was too disjointed that there was too much of a like uh, abrupt shift between that first part and that second part not just in the fact that we are looking at like um, Layla's perspective and then her friend's perspectives and how we have this sort of like um, retrospective perspective and then uh, action taking place in the moment um, but also like the whole narrative style uh, shifted so much within because of those changes so I just felt the book to be too disjointed and that's why I uh, ended up like and that's why I didn't end up like loving this book. I definitely think it was an enjoyable read. So if I have to order these books, uh, I would say my lowest is definitely going to be A Single Tread by Tracy Chevalier. I think next I will put The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri. And I should comment that this is already an enjoyable read. So the only book that I didn't like was A Single Tread. So this is going in my fifth spot. In my fourth spot, I'm going to put Women Talking by Miriam Taves, which I'm putting over The Beekeeper of Aleppo just because I think it brought up some very interesting comments and uh, commentary that I will definitely be reflecting on for some time to come. On my third spot, 10 minutes and 38 seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak. Uh, for second spot, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And clearly my winner is going to be Lanny by Max Porter. Uh, this whole experience has not changed my opinion that Lanny was the best one. The moment that that long list was announced and I knew Lanny was on there, I was like, this needs to win. I'm so happy that it made it into the finals and I'm going to be even more happy if it ends up, if it ends up winning. But I would say like, I'm very happy if any of my top three were to win, but I will definitely say Girl, Woman, Other or Lenny needs to win and then I'm going to be happy with these results. I'm still going to be okay with the result if 10 minutes 38 seconds wins. But if any of those other three win, then I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Because even though I feel like I like the Beekeeper of Aleppo and women talking, I don't think that they should win. And I definitely don't think a single thread should win. So if that one wins, it's going to be like... <sighs> I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. Yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And so based on that pinned comment down below, you know who the winner is and you know how I'll be feeling at this point. But so yeah, see you guys for the next one. Bye.